Guten Morgen and Willkommen Sie to a crazy mixed up top 10 this week, which is okay because they were crazy mixed up times. Grab your tickets for the past, the foreign country of the week ending October 20, 1988. At number 10, Pat Benatar gets all fired up with the best possible song for the purpose, that being all fired up. An absolute stonking rocker, this record did much better in Australia than anywhere else in the world, hitting number two, whereas it barely went top 20 in America. As rock music lay in its late 80s death throes, it was records like this that reminded us what made it so cool in the first place. Number nine, Wild Wild West by The Escape Club. With its unnerving similarity to Elvis Costello's Pump It Up, it holds the curious honour of being the only US number one by an English band which never made the charts in the UK with any of its releases. It's another one of those songs that you wouldn't actually go out and spend cash money on, per se, but nor would you get up to change a station on the radio to avoid it. The video was amusing, as it was punctuated with shots of a drummer who clearly didn't give a shit about being there. Number 8. Tony Childs hit with the very decent Stop Your Fussin', a record that overperformed here as it only peaked at number 17 nationally. Childs, like so many other D and C tier celebrities, has moved to Byron Bay in New South Wales, and, like so many others, is a constant pest with their loony politics, tin pot spirituality and social justice warriorage. In 2012, presumably just after she moved there, she made an appearance at a festival just north of where I live, the first festival I'd ever taken my 11-year-old daughter to see. And we were watching Childs on stage, never let it be said she can't sing. Just because someone is completely potty doesn't mean they can't sing. When all of a sudden, Childs decides she doesn't want to be on stage anymore and comes down onto the lawn area, has us all sit down and plonks herself right in front of my daughter, who is no little freaked out by this. Charles finishes the gig from there, a unique experience. Seven is the crushing bore that was Guns N' Roses. Well, yes, they were the loudest, crudest thing we'd heard on Top 40 in a while, but their formulaic attack, amateur hour rhythm section, guitarist given 600 bars of clean time, then his solo lopped to 64 of the least snooze inducing, and a vocalist who had a four and a half octave range for songs that have a one and a half octave range, Sweet Child of Mine was perhaps the most tolerable of their singles to the casual listener, but at some point during it it invariably invited a trip to the fridge, the bathroom, or outside of the house altogether. Do you recall earlier in our series when I said there was one record that actually sent my algorithm for the weekly rating backwards? Well, this is the band, and this is time they didn't fare much better. In a nation that produced Air Supply, the claim to the title of wimpiest Australian band ever is a noteworthy achievement and 1927 earned that in spades. Well, we can blame America for completing the wimpification of Air Supply, but 1927 were a purely local phenomenon. Having only ourselves to blame, we let this, their debut single, progress no further than number six and fairly soon forgot all about them. So much so that their greatest hits album didn't even make the top 100. Dorothy Sayers said facts are like cows, if you look them in the face long enough they generally run away. I found that like cows you can also milk them for all they're worth, as I do now with Fowl's fantastic world of facts. There were three local hits in the end of year top 25 for 1988, the highest being the pulchritudinous Kylie Minogue with I should be so lucky 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 lucky. The highest end of year ranking for the songs on this week's chart is number 16 for All Fired Up and number 2 for one that's yet to appear. So no spoilers. Top dog in the USA this week was Phil Collins whose groovy kind of love inveigled itself into the hearts. While from the glamorous boutiques of Nightbridge to the dark satanic mills up north, Whitney Houston bolstered the spirits of Britain with One Moment in Time. Number one album in the old hometown was Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits, which was in the middle of an interminable run at number one. Now, where were we? Ah, oh, yes, number five. 
At number five, it's Yaz and the Plastic Population with The Only Way Is Up. They had a follow-up hit with Stand Up For Your Love Rights, but alas, from that point, The Only Way was down. Four, 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 four. Oh dear, oh dear. At number four, it's the classic 80s poodle rock hot mess that was Bon Jovi with Bad Medicine. I'm almost ashamed to admit that without him in the chorus, I couldn't tell one Bon Jovi song from the other. Best Bon Jovi story is when they hired Jeff Beck to play a solo for them. Prior to flying over to NYC, Bon Jovi rang Beck personally to check on his requirements for that session. Just hire me a marshal, said Beck. Bon Jovi pressed him for details and rattled off marshal models for Beck to choose from, but was cut short. No mate, just a marshal. Come the day, Beck arrives at the studio, flight case in hand and without looking at the amp, takes out a stock white Stratocaster with a lead, plugs it in, Amps up, listens to a run through, twiddles some knobs on guitar and the Marshall, gives the engineer a nod, blasts out his solo, and when he's done, asks the producer, Is that what you're after, mate? The producer, keenly aware Beck is being paid by the hour, tells him indeed it is. The disappointed Bon Jovi, who was looking forward to a day learning at the feet of the master and in the end couldn't even find out the kind of amp he preferred. At number three is the as yet unrevealed second biggest seller for the year, Robert Palmer's Simply Irresistible. A consummate professional vocalist and the mildest of men in his private life. It's remarkable he maintained such a smooth voice for so long, given the 60 cigarette a day habit that eventually killed him. A five week number one and a permanent cultural ubiquity due to its Terence Donovan directed video. I don't think the song will ever be easily forgotten by anyone who listened to the radio in those Fin de Sequel Days of Rock. Number two. Phil Collins continued his worldwide domination with a soppy, groovy kind of love, joining with a small but purely hypothetical cult of artists who had a huge hit with, insert bad song here, yet flopped totally with, insert far superior and career defining work here. Groovy kind of love undoubtedly plugged into some kind of higher zeitgeist, aiming for number one for a week in November and later shifts in the top spot in the UK and US. Why? I have no idea. Before we unveil the number one this week, some sad news. Gene has resigned from German Sense of Humor Productions and won't be available to drum us into the number one song this week. Gene apparently feels his contribution is so essential to the channel, he wants a co-hosting credit for each episode. The Board of Directors was unwilling to grant this request, so Gene tended his resignation with immediate effect. We are actively seeking a replacement, but in the meantime, we improvise, adapt, and overcome. Numero uno this week is U2 with Desire, another of their occasional quests to establish authenticity and make people forget what a bunch of knobs they look like at Live Aid. Backed by a pretentious, unfathomable video consisting of Bono barking his usual cliched inanities over a ham bone beat, it's not the worst thing on this list. It's hard to be the worst thing on any list containing 1927. And it is at least upbeat and propulsive, but it's all too typical of the pseudo rock music that marked these dim days before the end as bands became brands and the term legacy act wormed its way into the popular lexicography. And that's how the cow ate the cabbage for the week ending 20th of October 1988. Don't cry no tears though. We'll be back soon with a new gene and what has now become apparent we need a new yellow wiggle for the closing screen. Until then, tempora mutantur, noze et mutamore et ilis.